Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Right now, before you attack, does anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello everyone, my name is DJ, this is the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and today I have a new commander from Modern Horizons 2. It is one of the best enchantresses out there because it can live in your command zone. It's Sethis Harvest's Hand. Sethis is green-white for a 1-2 legendary enchantment creature nymph. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain one life and draw a card. That's right, this deck is gonna be full of enchantments. Enchantress decks are so much fun. And when you have this effect, this cast an enchantment, draw a card in your command zone, it means that everything else in your deck functions so much better. You need draw? Yeah, you've got it in your command zone. You have a deck full of enchantments to trigger it. You need ramp? Some of the best ramp spells are enchantments. And of course, you can set up a wall of defenses behind powerful and unique enchantments, and then you can pivot to winning the game. This deck is awesome and powerful and so much fun to play. And now is the right time to build an Enchantment Matters deck. Not just because Sithis was reprinted, but because we have two more fantastic cards with Modern Horizons 2. Resurgent Belief can bring all of your enchantments back from the graveyard to the battlefield. It's only $1.50 right now and falling. Compare that to Replenish, which does the same thing, but is $135 and not getting cheaper. There's also Sanctum Weaver, $4.50 at the time of recording. You can tap to add a ton of mana to your mana pool. It's an enchantment in itself, just one of the best mana dorks in the stack. And that can be compared to Sarah's Sanctum, which is a just heart-wrenching $340. But that's okay because you don't need Replenish in Sarah's Sanctum. You can run this new version which the, with these new really good cards. Of course, if you have infinite money or you've been playing for a long time, yeah, you can include the reserve list cards. <laughs> it's not just the new cards that have been printed too. There are reprints in Modern Horizons too. Sterling Grove, Enchantress's Presence, and Mirari's Wake are all fantastic in this deck and they are all seeing reprints and their prices are dropping like crazy. So now's a great time to build this fun deck. One thing that makes this deck so fun is the amount of card draw that you can have in this deck. You just draw and draw and draw and draw because basically everything that you play is an enchantment and every enchantment you play you draw a card like top tier spells Argothian Enchantress and Enchantress's Presence. The reason why this is top tier is Argothian Enchantress has Shroud, which means it's hard to interact with. And the reason why Enchantress's Presence is top tier is because it's an enchantment itself. So that means that it can trigger other enchantments and it's great. Next up, we have tier two, which is Tessin Champion and Eidolon of Blossoms. These are great because they have Constellation, which means that it's just about having enchantments enter the battlefield and not just casting those enchantments. Uh, Satessin Champion is nice because it grows, but I don't want to blossom actually triggers itself, so it immediately replaces itself. Then we have tier three enchantresses, Mesa Enchantress, Seder Enchanter, and Verduran Enchantress. All of these are three mana instead of the wonderful two mana that we really like. Um, and yeah, you can include a critical mass of these. I mean, if you think about it, I just listed seven plus your commander. That's eight enchantresses. That's a huge portion of your deck just triggering off of every single enchantment spell. You know, I don't even have some of these uh, included in my version of the deck, like Mace Enchantress and Verduran Enchantress. Um, I don't have them specifically, so you don't even need all of them, especially if you round out your draw with other enchantments. Sylvan Library is a great enchantment, pairs really well with Abundance, letting you draw three cards of whatever you want. Uh, Crufix's Insight also can have you drawing three cards, looking six deep for the most relevant enchantments out there. Uh, Calyx Destiny's Hand is a really fun one, letting you search for enchantments, but also allowing you a little bit of removal. That's pretty cool. And Courser of Crufix is an enchantment in itself and lets you draw by playing lands off the top of your library. You know, raw card draw is great, but sometimes card selection is more important. Enlightened Tutor, Idyllic Tutor can both tutor up enchantments. Academy Rector can tutor it up and put it directly onto the battlefield. That's, that's just amazing. And then finally, if you want over the top sources of card advantage, I mentioned Resurgent Belief and Replenish. This can just literally pull 
five, ten enchantments out of the graveyard directly onto the battlefield, just a huge over-the-top effect that can win the game. And by the way, oftentimes when you dredge all of those enchantments back, they all have their own triggers, they trigger other constellation effects, and there's so much stuff to be done, it's game winning. Open the Vaults can do something similar, but it's symmetrical in six mana, so a lot of people don't like it very much. A Hall of Heliod's Generosity is amazing because it's such a low cost to include. It's just a colorless land in a two mana deck, amazing, but then you can just rebuy your relevant enchantments. So as you can see, we're gonna be drawing a lot of cards. Besides card draw, ramp seems to be one of the most critical pieces of winning a commander game. And green enchantments are phenomenal at ramp. You know, we talk about how important it is to ramp on two. How about ramping on one reliably? Wild Growth, Utopia Sprawl, and Carpet of Flowers. These are one mana enchantments that can reliably ramp you way more reliably than a lot of mana dorks out there. There's some ramp on two as well, Wolf Willow Haven and Fertile Ground, both give you some reliable ramp. There's Omen of the Hunt, which also gives you a land on the battlefield, very reliable. Of course, there are other cards like Herald of the Pantheon. I consider this much less reliable because it's a creature, and creatures can be removed pretty easily. Of course, if you're going to be chaining enchantment into enchantment into enchantment and drawing card after card after card, sometimes reducing its casting cost by one will save you more mana than just getting a land onto the battlefield. Next, we have some more ways to get extra lands on the battlefield, some of the most powerful in exploration, burgeoning, Dryad of the Elysian Grove. And of course, we have some unique ways to get big mana. Mana Bloom is a favorite of mine. You can sink mana into it and then use it on later turns, or you can just drop it as an enchantment with no abilities and no counters on it, trigger all of your enchantment things, and then return it to your hand at the next turn, which kind of is what you want in this deck. You just want to play enchantments. I mentioned unique. Smothering Tithe is not unique. It's just really good. Mirari's Wake doubles up your mana and can make your creatures relevant. Yes, there are creatures in this deck. And then there's Nyx Bloom Ancient. Of course, it's an enchantment, but also gives you huge amounts of mana. Now, if we're going to spend all this time dirtling and ramping and drawing cards, we need to be able to defend ourselves. We have enchantment-based removal, Darksteel Mutation, Kenrith's Transformation, and Lingify. All of these can trap your opponent's commanders on the battlefield. They're really interesting enchantments that aren't really susceptible to removal as much as some of the other ones. But they only hit creatures. If we're wanting to take out other things besides creatures, Song of the Dryads, Grasp of Fate, Elspeth Conquers Death are really great. Uh, Grasp of Fate is actually the kind of enchantment that I'm worried about playing too much of because it just exiles something and then as soon as Grasp of Fate is taken out, well, everything comes back again. I like Grasp of Fate because it's a built-in three for one, and so I think that that's a good trade-off for the risk that I take on. But I'm not really excited about just Oblivion Ring. If you're looking to answer artifacts, Aura of Silence is fantastic, the taxation effect is miserable, and if you really need to take something out, the answer's right there. And then I also like Consulate Crackdown. It's a lot of mana, but if you're playing against a lot of artifact decks, this is a really fun, just like one-sided board wipe that takes out all of the artifacts. If it gets blown up, all of the artifacts do come back, but it has that really big upside of taking out five or six or seven things for a single card that I do like. You know, we could just prevent our enchantments from being blown up. Greater Oromancy, Sterling Grove, give your enchantments Shroud. I like Sterling Grove because your opponents have to target it, but when they do, you just sacrifice it and get the relevant enchantment that you need anyways. In fact, sometimes I just sacrifice it to get my win condition. Then there's Privileged Position. It costs too much mana and too much money, so I don't think I include it in my decks very often. You know, one underrated way to defend yourself is just by blocking. The Birth of Miletus gives you a 0-4 colorless wall, gains you some life, draws you a card. It does a little bit of everything. The first Eroan Games does something similar. You get a relevant creature to block with. It gets pretty big. You draw some cards. It's pretty great. And then there's Urza's Saga, which uh, is just ridiculous because it's a ridiculous card. In fact, it's actually an enchantment, so it can trigger a lot of the constellation effects in here and is just a land. And it contributes to some of the other gross things that enchantments can do. It's actually crazy. You don't have a lot of artifacts, so these constructs are not going to be like really big and relevant, 
but that doesn't matter. You also don't have a lot of artifacts to search up, but you do have a soul ring. There are other relevant artifacts out there, so it seems like a slam dunk in this deck, which makes me think it's a slam dunk in every deck. I don't even know. Or is a saga man? Ugh. Then there's the classic defensive cards, Ghostly Prison, they have to pay two to attack you. Sphere of Safety, they have to pay infinite to attack you. If you want more of this effect, Elephant Grass comes down earlier. It has a cumulative upkeep, so I don't like it so much, but if you're looking for more of this effect, that could work. You know, I don't think you guys realize how much card draw you're actually gonna be doing. In fact, you're gonna be drawing so many cards, you don't even need your draw step. Island Sanctuary and Solitary Confinement. Both of these have you skip your draw step, but if you do, you know, with Island Sanctuary, you can only be a, attacked by creatures that flying in Island Walk, so very few creatures. Solitary Confinement just prevents all damage to you and gives you Shroud, you know, but there's a cost of discarding cards but you're gonna have so many cards from all of these enchantresses just going off. You also have dueling grounds, which can be supremely annoying for some decks, just making you them attack you with one creature. Sometimes they just don't have a big enough creature and you're just like, okay, or you just chump it. It can sometimes take over a game. It especially is annoying because it works on everyone. It can be exhausting. And then if you want to pair Sandworm Convergence with Island Sanctuary, uh, it says creatures with flying can't attack you. So that just means we're talking about ground creatures with Island Walk. Pretty good. And if you're this defensive, you could take the Monarch and keep it. Court of Bounty and Court of Grace can do some gross things. Now, everything that I've talked about have you see ramp and draw cards and protect yourself. In fact, it makes it feel like your opponents could never attack you. And that's kind of true sometimes, but you're gonna have to pivot. You're gonna have to try to win the game eventually. A card like Destiny Spinner can do that out of nowhere. Four mana and you can make a land you control become an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn where X is the number of enchantments you control. That can be a lot, like 10 or 20, it's crazy. Nylea's Colossus is big and it can make other things super duper big. You can easily put three or four enchantments onto the battlefield in a single turn, which makes a pretty modest 4-4 into something that can kill an opponent. You can go with enchantment-based infinite combos. Earthcraft on a basic land and Squirrel Nest can go infinite and create you an infinite number of squirrels, and then you can overwhelm everyone with squirrels. The downside is that Earthcraft is very expensive. I think the classic way to kill someone in enchantment decks is through flyers. Luminarch Ascension can be online so quickly because it's so hard to attack you, and then you just pump two mana into it to make a 4-4 angel. You just make an army of angels that your opponents can't deal with. Archon of Sun's Grace can give you an army of Pegasi because like I said, you're just gonna be playing enchantment after enchantment after an enchantment. And then Sigil of the Empty Throne again produces a ton of angels. These are gonna be fundamentally used differently. For example, if you have an Archon of Sun's Grace on the battlefield and you replenish bringing everything back, it's a constellation trigger, which means that you'll get an army of 2-2 Pegasi. Sigil of the Empty Throne, on the other hand, says you have to cast the enchantment, so bringing everything back won't net you an army of angels uh, yet. You'll still be able to draw a ton of cards and cast a bunch of enchantments. But do you know what my preferred way to kill your opponent is? Is with the enchantments themselves. Opalescence is a hilarious card. It turns all of your enchantments into creatures with power and toughness equal to their mana cost. This is hilarious. It actually makes them more vulnerable. So sometimes Opalescence is like a bad move that has you losing a game, but there's nothing more hilarious than taking all of your defenses, all of your ramp and saying, oh, they're all creatures out of nowhere and you just attack someone to death. I love it. Starfield of Nyx is basically the same thing. It says you have to have five or more enchantments. Honestly, it's not for this deck, it's for constructed, so you can't just like put ley lines into play and just make an army out of nowhere with Opalescence. You have to have like a critical mass of enchantments. In this deck, actually, you can play it and then return enchantments to the battlefield over and over again. So I actually like Starfield of Nyx a lot. And that's the deck. It is fun and powerful. And one of the reasons why I like it so much is because you always have something to do because you have some of the best ramp in the format and you have some of the most reliable card draw right there in your command zone. 
You also have defenses, so you're staying in the game longer, and you have interesting win conditions. Maybe not that combo win condition, but killing people with Pegasuses or turning your enchantments sideways at the very end are fun ways to close out a game. Let me know what spicy enchantments you're including in your version in the comments down below. I want to thank you for watching. I also want to thank Cool Stuff Inc. They're the sponsor of the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. And if you use the coupon code JUMBO5, you'll save 5% off your order. Go on over there and look at the great Modern Horizons 2 cards. You know you want to buy some singles. I also want to thank my patrons. They make this show happen. Thank you, patrons. And thanks for watching. I'll see you all really soon. Bye-bye.